For me, it is exceptionally inspiring as well as humbling to have so many legendary silent warriors gathered here tonight. And I want to thank Charles Pink and everyone at the Society for serving as the keepers of the flame in preserving the history and the soul of the OSS and for honoring, honoring extraordinary individuals with an award that carries the name of that great American hero, General William Donovan. General Donovan's spirit resides in the heart of every American engaged in special operations and intelligence work. His courage, creativity, compassion, and resolve set the high standards that we strive to meet every day in every mission in every corner of the world. At Langley, statues of General Donovan are proudly displayed immediately outside my office as well as inside my office as I want to make sure that all my visitors know that today's CIA is proudly carrying on the mission and the legacy of the OSS. This is a year of anniversaries that bring to mind General Donovan's epic achievements. It marks 100 years since the start of the First World War, the war in which Wild Bill's valor earned him the Medal of Honor. It is also 70 years since the Normandy landings and the liberation of Paris in which the skill and daring of his OSS operatives figured prominently. One such operative retired from his agency post this year, and he is well known to all of you. That operative is the intelligence icon and great American patriot, Ambassador Hugh Montgomery. I had the privilege of speaking at Hugh's farewell in April. I recall that he had parachuted into Normandy ahead of the Allied invasion force, participated in liberating the Buchenwald concentration camp, and took part in some of the boldest and most productive clandestine operations of the Cold War. Then I asked you to come up and offer some remarks. In doing so, he put in a good word for our security protective officers, mentioning how gracious and helpful they are every day at Langley headquarters. He heaped high praise on a colleague's cookies. He spoke warmly of the, his dear friend and fellow OSS and CIA veteran, the great Joe Procaccino and he thanked his wife and his family for their many decades of love and support. Ambassador Montgomery exemplifies General Donovan's core of glorious amateurs who were, in fact, consummate professionals in every respect. They embodied that rare blend of qualities, remarkable talent, and tremendous bravery, matched with admirable discretion and quiet humility. Their attitude later found expression in Richard Helm's observation, service at the CIA is its own reward. I see agency officers every day, here and overseas, who share the spirit and the dedication epitomized by Ambassador Montgomery and by so many great Americans assembled in this room tonight. These agency officers are handed assignments that entail great risk and difficulty, and they follow through with the ingenuity, improvisation, and audacity that were OSS hallmarks. The challenges they face and the threats they combat are very different from those confronted by their predecessors some 70 years ago. But today's officers are driven by the same fundamental motivations that have always sustained our republic, love of country and the will to serve. And that brings us to the man we honor tonight. For 50 years, since he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the US Army, Leon Panetta has devoted his life to public service and it has been his profound sense of patriotism and service, the heartfelt desire to give something back to his country that has defined his career. I had the pleasure of meeting Leon back in the mid-1990s when I was a PDB briefer and he was President Clinton's Chief of Staff. Most recently, I spent many, many, many hours with him in the White House Situation Room where he lent his wisdom, judgment, and the occasional four-letter word to national security deliberations. Okay, so that was more than occasional. <laughs> it was pretty damn frequent, in fact. <laughs> While Leon was never known as an intelligence or special operations expert before he came to CIA, it didn't matter. What did matter was his innate understanding of what you have to do to lead an organization. Set strategic priorities, give experts the freedom to get the job done, and inspire your people to believe in something bigger than themselves. Those are principles that William Donovan himself lived by. As for Leon's accomplishments, those two would impress the general. On Leon's watch, 
Al Qaeda sustained relentless and punishing losses, including that of its founder and leader, the supposedly invincible Osama bin Laden. It was an operation that will stand forever as one of the greatest examples of melding first rate intelligence with the very best of special operations planning and execution. Above all, it was truly a national triumph, one that filled every American with pride in our ability to advance the cause of justice in the world. And I know that the women and men of the Central Intelligence Agency will long remember and appreciate Director Panetta's leading role in seeing that operation through to its historic conclusion. So Leon, on behalf of the men and women of CIA, indeed the men and women of the entire country, thank you for that outstanding achievement. Now, anyone familiar with Leon knows that he never shies away from taking on enormous challenges, making difficult decisions, or, of course, engaging in worthy fights. I was going to recommend tonight, Leon, that you should take some time and write a book, but I... <laughs> a apparently, you already have. And it's, it's already published? It's already out? Yes. Does the president know that you've written this book, Leon? <laughs> Did you put it through the CIA's publication review? <laughs> <clears throat> Did he talk about the president in the book? He said what? Law professor? What? He didn't talk about me in the book, did he? <clears throat> okay. So, what I think shines through, though, across Leon's 50 years of extraordinary public service is Leon's absolute belief in and commitment to some basic but essential principles. First is the fundamental virtue and decency of the country. Another is the obligation to get things done on behalf of the common good. And still another is the duty, duty to be a careful steward to do what you can to pass along to future generations an organization, an institution, or a country that is better than when you found it. By any measure, and with the constant love and support of his wife, Sylvia, and the companionship of his lovable dog, Bravo, Leon has achieved, <laughs> yeah, give Bravo a hand. <laughs> we probably should give Sylvia one too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Leon has achieved great things on behalf of his fellow citizens. He has made strong contributions toward building a better and safer world for our children and our grandchildren. And he is most deserving of the General William Donovan Award. And Leon, I want to bring to you the best wishes, love, and admiration of all those CIA officers who truly enjoyed and benefited from your terrific leadership, as well as the greetings of all of us here in this room, and thanks for not just a terrific job at CIA and the Department of Defense, but a life of achievements and success. Thank you very much.